There's something I want to show you, and this is the CLI page on angular.io. CLI. And this is the page on Angular or the Angular website that is dedicated to the CLI. And if you go on this page, you can see everything that you can actually do with the CLI. And you just saw that we just did this, ran these three commands. And what I want to do now is to generate the service that I need. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this table. And on this table, you can see all the different commands that you can use. And you can click on them to see uh, more details about them. So I'm going to click on the generate because I'm trying to generate a new service or anything else. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see we have everything here that we can actually generate. So we can use this um, generate here with any of those arguments here. So what I want to do is to create a service. So I'm going to go down here and click on service. You can see it gives me the actual uh, command. So I can do ng generate service and then pass in the name of the service with some options. So I'm just going to copy this and then go back to my terminal. And I'm going to stop the server for a second and I'm going to clear this. And here I'm just going to pass in this command and then I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to call it employee. So what the Angular CLI is going to do is do employee that service. It's going to add the service to this. So before I run this, there's something else I want to show you. So if you scroll down here, you can see if you want to skip tests, we can set this skip tests, um, I guess, options to to be true or false. So I don't want to have any tests. So I'm going to copy this uh, because I want, I don't want to generate the test file. And then I'm going to delete all of this. So that way it won't create the spec file or the test file. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And as you can see now, the CLI went ahead and uh, created this file, which is employee.service.ts. And it didn't create a spec file, which I don't need. So at this point, I can just do code and then a dot. And this is going to open Visual Studio Code. So now I have Visual Studio Code open. And I'm just going to navigate to the service. I'm going to go into the source and the app. And then here's the uh, employee service.ts file. So in this file, what we need to do, we need to create some function that I can actually reach to the back end to do some work for us. So we'll have a function to add an employee, update an employee, delete an employee, and et cetera. So to do this, we need to have some way to make HTTP requests. And the way to do this in Angular is to use something called the HTTP client. And this is a built-in HTTP client that we can use to make HTTP requests. And we can just inject it in the service so that we can use it. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to go on here, and I'm just going to do private and I'm going to call it HTTP and it's going to be of type HTTP client. And make sure this is imported. This is supposed to come from Angular HTTP. So once we have access to this HTTP client, we can actually start making HTTP requests to the backend. So I'm going to create a first function. I'm going to do public and I'm going to call it get employees so that I can get a list of all the employees. Of course, this function is not going to take any parameters and it's going to return an observable. So I'm going to do observable and I'm just going to give it a type because the observable is a generic. So I'm going to say any for now, but then later we're going to create a specific interface that can represent our employees in the backend. So for now, I'm just going to pass in any, so it's going to return an observable of anything. And then I can just call the HTTP client to make the request. So I'm going to do return this, that HTTP client or the HTTP that I have. And then I need to make a get request here. As you can see, we have access to many different types of HTTP request method. And for this, I need to send the get request because that's what the backend is expecting. So I'm going to select get. And then here I have to pass in uh, just the URL. So here I'm going to go up top and then define a URL for that. So I'm going to do private. And I'm just going to call it API server URL. And I'm going to set it equal to some empty string for now. We can put that URL in, uh, later. So now I can just pass in the actual URL to the server uh, where this request is supposed to be made. And again, the get method is also a generic as you can see. So for now, I'm just going to pass in any and then pass in the actual URL. So this is going to be the URL that we define up top. So I'm going to pass in a backtick and then I'm going to do a dollar sign, open and close curly braces. And this is a simple um, JavaScript notation that you can use to put variable and then string at the same time. So I'm going to do this, that API URL. So this is going to be our URL. And then I can pass in some more data. So I can do forward slash employee. And this is supposed to be to go to all. 
So what we're doing in this function is to tell the HTTP client where to make the request and the type of request to make. So here we call in the HTTP client and then we say, hey, this is going to be a get request and the return type is going to be anything for now. We're going to change that in a minute. And the whole point of using TypeScript is to have type. So we have to specify what type of data we're expecting to get back. And since this is a get request, we don't need to pass in anything in the body and we don't have any headers. So we just pass in the URL here. So we're going to be repeating this process until we can have a function to add employee, update employee, delete employee.